Good afternoon and welcome everybody to today's webinar, Modern Workplace Webinar Series with our friends from Camera Corner Connecting Point. I'd like to quickly introduce you to um, our presenter today. He is from Camera Corner Connecting Point. It is Mark Lemke, Chief Technology Officer for Camera Corner Connecting Point and ACP Creative IT. Mark is an IT professional with over 36 years of experience. He has spent 23 years at Camera Corner Connecting Point over in Green Bay, Wisconsin, which is now a part of ACP Creative IT based out of Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Mark's experience includes building, supporting, and managing IT infrastructure for many corporate, government, healthcare, and education clients. He leads the engineering team and advises clients on the best solutions available for their needs. In addition to his experience at ACP Creative IT, Mark spent over 10 years managing and working in data centers across the United States for U.S. companies like Global Crossing, AC Nielsen, and Thrivent Financial. Having managed data centers for large enterprise businesses in the past, Mark has, had, has a desire for solutions he would have wanted in his various roles to allow for greater functionality, collaboration, communication, and efficiency. Welcome, Mark. I appreciate you being here with us today. Could you tell us a little bit about Camera Corner Connecting Point and ACP Creative IT? Sure. Uh, Camera Corner Connecting Point, uh, if you move on, moving on to the other slide, the next slide, this shows a history of the two companies. So Camera Corner Connecting Point is a 67-year-old 60, third-generation family-run business. Um, started out as a camera company and have evolved into IT, audiovisual, uh, retail sales floor, security. And you can see, you know, this shows the transition of the company over the years, as well as ACP or Arlington Computer Products, which again is a 36 year old, so very mature companies, 36 year old company based out of Buffalo Grove, Illinois, family run or family owned business as well. And again, in uh, October of 2018, we merged and this kind of shows the history of the two companies. Moving on. So between the two organizations, we have about 200 employees. We're spread across uh, three different locations in three different states. So as you mentioned, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Buffalo Grove, Illinois, and Atlanta, Georgia. About $150 million in annual revenue. And again, we, we focus on about six different pillars. So IT, audiovisual, physical security, managed services, unified communications, and we have a retail store, storefront as well. And the two combined companies now make up what's called Arling ACP Creative IT. Um, and our plan for the next three to five years is growth through acquisition. This shows a portfolio of our partners. Again, because of the multiple pillars we have through audiovisual, IT, we have a lot of different partners that we, we work with. This just shows a, a few of them and shows a breakdown of, of the different pillars that, that they represent. That is quite a few partners that you guys have, and some of those are shared partners between our organization and yours. And I know you have a great relationship with a lot of these vendors um, and have used them to help your clients achieve their end goals. Yes. So, for today, we are here to talk about the modern workplace and how ACP Creative IT and CCP have come together into a modern workplace and utilize digital transformation techniques um, to get you guys there. So 
One of the questions that we have asked all of our clients and all of our friends is, what was the catalyst for your organization to move to the modern workplace and adopting, and specifically for your organization, what was the push for adopting a governance strategy? Right. Yeah, you know, one of the things that really drove the work to the modern, the modern workplace was the merger of the two companies. You know, we found that through the merger of the two companies, uh, we each had unique software that we had been running for many, many years. We each have unique email systems. We had special file system requirements. Um, we had a Microsoft file server with just a shared drive where everybody stored the files. We really had no governance around it, so it became a free for all. It became a collection for everything. Uh, email became particularly overwhelming. You know, we have all employee emails that go out for new hire announcements, for birthday announcements. Um, employees would send out items for sale or potentially on the, in the summer months, we have uh, food truck Fridays, you know, what food trucks are out in the parking lot. So, you know, it started to act our a bit, it started to affect our ability to respond to customer emails because we had so many other emails for other for these type of events. Um, as well as each company had its own phone system and they were not compatible. So we couldn't three or four digit extension dial between the companies. Communication between the companies became somewhat difficult. So leaders in the organization kind of rec recognized all of these opportunities for digital transformation. And we looked at the ability to utilize our Microsoft 365 licensing to its fullest. So, you know, this really didn't start out as a strategic initiative that was handed down. It was just driven by the need. By the need of the organization and the two merging um, companies. Um, you've definitely covered some of those great pain points, um, especially when it comes to email and email overload. Not sure if you feel like I do, but it seems like, especially since this pandemic hit, my inbox has just been out of control with external emails that are coming in. Because I know Red Level has been able to adapt Teams and adapt Yammer, and that's helped with a lot of the internal communications that have been happening, but I still get so many emails each and every day. I can't imagine what that overwhelming and overload would have been had we not been utilizing things like Teams or Yammer. Is that how you guys were feeling? Yeah, you know, that's how we felt as well. Just kind of overwhelmed and, and again, wanting to focus or needing to focus on the customer emails, the things that help drive our business and not all, all of the others. Okay, now you mentioned you made the, you went, through and you made the choice to go with your Microsoft 365. At any point, had you or the other organization worked with some competing products? Um, why was it? Why did you choose to go with the Microsoft suite of products? You know, we had had used other kind of niche products before for texting, um, some communication products. You know, Microsoft is one of our key partners and saying that the Office 365 or the Microsoft 365 suite provided, you know, so many different applications to handle all the different needs that we had just seemed like a good fit. <coughs> okay. okay. Now, how did you start down the path of digital transformation, the transition to the modern workplace? Um, and then separately, we'll go into the specific governance piece of your digital transformation. So just in general, how did mm -hmm. you start down this path? You know, it was a, it was a team approach. Um, we identified as a team, we identified stakeholders from multiple departments um, and, and multiple pillars of the company that would represent those groups um, we knew that we were going to need 
buy-in or support from the multiple departments to get the end user adoption and to be successful for a project like this. So, you know, we identified the stakeholders from the different groups. We brought them together and, and kind of started this process. So even though we're an IT company for our customers, developing and delivering a, a, a governance strategy like this is different than what we deliver for our customers today. So that's where we reached out to Red Level to help with the, the training and help to develop the governance for the 365 tools, you know, and, and uh, the training around their use. And you know, what, as part of that, what was that approach like? You now, who was part of your team? What different departments were in there? I mean, how many people did you engage in this initial start towards digital transformation? What did that look like for your organization? So the original meetings were roughly 16 people, um, people that we had identified from human resources, marketing, uh, finance, sales groups, training groups, and then through our different pillars, we had representatives from our IT pillar, our uh, voice communication teams, audiovisual, and operations of the company. Um, we brought all of them together. Um, one of the things that, that Red Level helped us with, and, and the way that we started is, they set up training on each of the Microsoft 365 tools. So we had training on OneDrive, training on Teams and Yammer, SharePoint, for each of the members of, of the stakeholder team. What this did is that the training provided those members of that governance team kind of further insight and an understanding about each of the applications, what they could be used for, and just to get a sense. So as we started to talk about the governance, which tools we would use, um, how they would be used, um, and to be able to utilize the, the tools in the fullest. That was really a, a key piece of this because a lot of the members of this team had never seen or used any of these tools before. They were new to a lot of the, the members. So get an understanding of what was out there and what we were going to be talking about when we looked at the overall governance. You know, there are so many. Uh, I'm sorry, through those sessions, what, I guess, what were some of the more impactful outcomes? So you went in to understand how OneDrive could be utilized in your organization. You know, what was that one nugget that came out of that session versus what came out of your team session? Um, what were those, those big gleaming nuggets of, of goodness that came out of each of those sessions? Because I know I've been a part of some of those types of <laughs> sessions. And it's amazing yeah. what you yep. can pull out of those. Yeah, you know, and I think it was just the simplicity that it was going to create in a lot of the environments. Again, I mentioned our, our share drive. We really struggled with that being a, a collecting point for everything. And it became troublesome for our engineering teams and our administrative staff to access those files and that information when they were outside of the building or as our two organizations merged from one organization to the other without having VPN set up and remote access set up. Um, it became difficult getting to the data that we needed the traditional way, where with OneDrive, it made that access much simpler. You know, no longer setting up VPNs, our users could access it from home at a customer site while they're on the road. Um, overall, it made things much easier. You know, and then having the integration of, of Teams as well, being able to communicate right from those tools and be able to move files or share files through Teams as well um, really helped. So we saw those as big advantages and able to simplify our environment. So as you went through and you started with 
the governance team, your governance group, this key group of 16 members, how did you move forward once you put all of the governance team members through training on each of the individual products? Mm -hmm. um, while you were going through this process, did you come up with a governance strategy or a governance map of how this information and these tools and these ways of utilizing these tools um, and the, the how and the when and the why of each of these tools, um, how did you plan on your on disseminating that to the rest of the organization? Sure. Yeah, with, with Red Level's guidance through these sessions, through these training sessions, I mean, after we went through the product training and then we started to focus on the governance, um, we started to look at our, our internal problems or pain points, as I mentioned, like our shared drive, and then looked at the tools that we had been presented through the Microsoft Office 365 as to which tools would be best to handle those type of situations. And through the guidance of Red Level, we, we kind of put the governance together as far as what products would be used in certain scenarios. You know, when is email appropriate? When is it appropriate to use Teams for some type of a, a, a text message that you're looking for more of an immediate response? And then when would a tool like Yammer be more appropriate for maybe announcements, you know, birthday announcements, uh, new employee greetings. And we put together that definition to say, for these type of situations, here's the product you use. And then our goal was that in the end, we would run individual training sessions on each of the applications, deliver that training to our end users, and throughout that training, reinforce the use of those products. You know, at which tools, are appropriate for which type of activities. Now, I know when we originally started through going down the governance path with you guys, um, you had a timeline in mind, and then 2020 happened. <laughs> um, so how did that timeline, so what was your initial timeline, and how did that timeline adjust, and then what, I guess, what have the results of that altered timeline been? Sure. Yeah, so I, I think our original timeline, you know, was, was much more of a, you know, a, a thought out and a longer process where we were looking at, at each app individually. So we focused on OneDrive first, seeing that that would be the biggest impact to our organization. So we developed training for the OneDrive we um, put on a, a pilot of that training to our internal stakeholder team um, and then prepared to go forward and, and, and train the users with that. Um, but it was really, you know, identifying each of the products first. So as I mentioned, you know, OneDrive was gonna be our first one. We'll train the users. We would roll that out, make sure they get comfortable with it. Then come back and do a secondary training for teams, do training on all of our users. Again, give them the directions as to when teams is appropriate and what, what it should be used for. Then come back and do SharePoint and then Yammer as separate systems. So overall, you know, I think it may have been um, probably about a six month goal. We were, we're taking it slow to make sure that we had everything in place. Um, and then, through the, the COVID, you know, work from home initiative, everything really got accelerated. So we didn't have, you know, the luxury of, of that timeline and it really became much more aggressive. So when the users went home, they, they focused on the OneDrive and they got some of the teams training right away. Um, we did some, you know, some uh, Yammer training to get them, you know, we, we did some little tasks as well. Like when we pushed out Yammer as an option, we still haven't done formal training on it. That That's still to come. But we started to ask people as they worked from home to publish pictures of their home offices. You know, what does what your home office look like to, to kind of get more interaction between the end users, get them collaborating back and forth more, 
and to start getting them to utilize the tool to some point. Um, so that helped, but it, it has certainly shortened our timeline and, and everything kind of got rolled out together. And utilizing tools like that definitely helped, at least for Red Level, um, helped keep that community feeling within the organization. So while we are working from home, we were never working alone. Um, there was always group collaboration that we had. Um, it was we did also do the you know share a picture of your work from home setup or share yep. a picture of your um, work from home teacher setup that you had <laughs> going um, in, in some instances. Uh, so it's definitely been a huge help for us, and it sounds like it was uh, definitely a great way for you guys to go as well. Yes, you know, like you mentioned, just with teams being able to do the video chats. It certainly kept the groups much closer, being able to see each other and have face-to-face -face conversations rather than just, you know, phone calls and text messages during this work from home period. Yeah, a lot can get lost without that, I guess, face-to-face <laughs> -face, uh, communication, even though yes. the face-to-face -face is currently pixel to pixel. It still certainly helps with that. So you took a six month timeline and truncated it down un into under three months. Yes. Um, what has been your experience with that that express timeline, we'll call it? Um, actually, the users adapted to it very, very well. I mean, everyone was really excited. I think that when they began the work from home to be able to have these tools to keep them more in touch, to, to make it simpler to, to share files and documents, to make it simpler to communicate, whether it's with a text message through Teams or the face-to-face, -face, just to keep that, that little more personal interaction, you know, that they were used to when they were in the office. Absolutely. So we did talk about a couple of the golden nuggets. Um, I want to go through and see if as you went through your governance planning and as you went through the rollout of these different technologies, first, were there any gotchas? You know, 20, hindsight is always 2020. Were there any gotchas where, eh, probably could have done that a little bit differently and it might have worked out better? And then were there any additional golden nuggets that, you know, as people go through digital transformation and moving to a modern workplace that you might share with them so that they can you know, learn from your experiences. Sure. Yeah, I would say that the biggest really unexpected issue that we ran into focused around device management, which we really weren't expecting. Um, when we developed the internal training for our users on the 365 products, we started to do pilot training sessions for the stakeholders. And we immediately identified that we had UI or user interface differences in the training material than what each user was seeing at their desktop. So as the stakeholders came in with their laptops and started going through the training, we found that there were differences in the OS versions that they were running. There were differences in the versions of Microsoft tools that they were running, and that was causing differences in the training material, where the trainer would say, you know, go up to these three dots, make this selection. Half of the stakeholders in the training didn't have that option. You know, it wasn't there because they were on an older version or a different version. So we identified right away that we needed to, to take a little pause go back and really implement device management and make sure that we had all of the operating systems, you know, at a, a single version, that we had all of the office tools deployed at a consistent version in order for the training to actually come off effective and, and the users to experience the same um, screens and the same options that they were seeing as part of the training. So that was really the, the biggest in and most unexpected problem that we ran into. Um, let's see, the other gotcha, you know, 
was more that as we went through some of the, the governance pieces, we would spin our wheels on a particular task or get hung up a little bit too much on a particular piece. And that's where Ryan or Red Level kind of kept us on track. We would able either table it for later or he would help provide us examples of, of what other customers had done and had been successful with um, so that we just didn't get tied up and, and kind of stuck with that one problem. Um, but again, you know, we certainly, we utilize this current work from home initiative to help speed up the roll up process and the adoption, you know, has gone very, very well. So what would you say, what, when you started this process, you know, what were your goalposts? What, what were you trying to achieve? And then throughout the process, have you been able to achieve those results? And um, have you been able to achieve more than what you were expecting or um, less than what you were expecting? Yeah, you know, so I, I think our, our original goals were to one, reduce the, the, the email that we were getting that, that was not customer focused email you know, the things that were not important for the business day to day. And just to provide a, a simpler method of communication for the two now merged companies to communicate. You know, it was, it was new for our organization because we're a, a single building, you know, in a, a single town and now having to deal with, you know, multiple users in multiple states across the country, you know, not able to see them face to face. Um, so that's where the implementation of, you know, OneDrive helped with, with sharing information between the organizations back and forth, made it much simpler. We no longer had to implement the VPNs between the sites immediately. Um, so simplifying data access was one. Uh, the communication back and forth through Teams, um, again, since our phone systems were incompatible and we couldn't extension dial. And when we did talk to somebody either on their cell phone, again, it's not seeing that face to face. So it's not relating that that person, you know, to their face. So being able to do voice calls within teams, you know, that's been a, a great positive. So just faster and, and simpler communication, you know, between our users at our, our single locations, but also across the organization now in the multiple locations. So overall collaboration, you know, is the key. So what we're still, we're still working on, we, we've started a pilot launch of SharePoint and we're still looking to fully roll that out to the organization, you know, within the next couple of weeks. Okay, so that actually does tee up my, my next question is, what are you, what's next for you? <laughs> What's the next thing you're going to be tackling? Yep. So the intranet, you know, or, or deployment of the intranet using Valo is, is our next our next big milestone. Um, as I mentioned, we've done a pilot release of that to some internal users, the stakeholder users. And the goal is really to release this to the entire company to provide the users easier access to our company policies to our, our benefit information um, and directories that list photos of all the employees. Uh, again, having employees now in, in multiple locations, multiple states makes it different just to relate to those people. So having um, a directory with the photos. Um, and then after the deployment of the intranet, the last thing that we were planned on focusing on is a deployment of Yammer. You know, again, we, we did an informal pilot of Yammer just to get people to post their office photos and, and, and start to utilize the tool. But we really want to roll out, you know, a more organized training and again, focus on the governance directives of, of when it's going to be used, what type of of information is appropriate to put into Yammer and when is, is it appropriate to use that. Um, so going back and, and, and finishing those two up are our next big milestones. 
And what do you anticipate your results being? So what what do you see Valo Internet helping you solve for and what do you see Yammer or improved or continued use of Yammer helping you solve for? Yeah. So on the intranet, you know, in the past we have this share drive and we might have a folder for HR, we might have a folder for insurance benefits, and we have folders for our statement of work processes. But now we see with the intranet being able to organize that information across the entire company, across all employees in all the sites, so that they can go to just one place and, and that data is always there. You know, today we have people always requesting, we'll get an email saying, you know, I can't find the current version or where is the current version of this? So providing some consistent space um, and just consistency location wise about where those documents are and how to access them. You know, and, and the internet will give us where we can put some data around that as well. You know, maybe some updates or, or news information. You know, that's very tough to get out today outside of email. And then with, with Yammer, you know, again, moving more of the email communications that that doesn't need to be in, in our customer facing email box, but more of the new employee hires, you know, as I mentioned, um, birthdays where we will get a birthday notice sent out and then you get all the employees responding to that, you know, so you get 10 to 20 to 30 responses. Absolutely. So, you know, okay. Yammer is an appropriate place for that. Uh, well, wonderful. I'm excited to see what your end results are with Valo Internet and with Yammer. Um, we do have a couple of questions if you have a few minutes. Sure. That have come in through our Q&A panel. Uh, the first question was, what issues were the most pressing when you started down this path? I think the most pressing again, um, twofold. One being the ease of access to the data now that we had, we had staff in multiple locations. So getting them to our shared drive where all of our content was and, and getting us access to their content as well. So being able to you know, make access to that information easier and then just to improve collaboration. You know, so be able to uh, communicate face to face more often, uh, make it simpler so that people do it you know, more frequently. And then what were the solutions that you used to solve those issues? The big one again for us was the OneDrive. Um, being able to put that information, all of our, our documents into OneDrive and be able to share those without requiring specific VPN access to our network and user authentication into our, our file server or our shared drive. So OneDrive made that much simpler, you know, and much easy, easier to expand that out to the entire organization. You know, as well as teams again for the communication side, just made it much easier to communicate in, in text quickly and then add that video chat, you know, or the ability to video conference as needed. Okay, and what were some of the surprise outcomes of the governance session? You know, I, I think that the surprise was really getting us to step back a little bit and, and look at our data a little more to understand how the data was used and why we were keeping some of the information um, and then determining the, the governance around that. I mean, what data did we really not need anymore, but it just wasn't being cleaned up? Um, what data you know needed security access requirements around it that either had it today or didn't have it today? Um, you know, some stuff should have been a little more public, some stuff should have been a little more secure. So really sitting back and, and focusing and having that time to, to look through the data that we needed to share and, and understand the needs a little more. 
And then throughout the entire process, what is what have what have been the best of the best outcomes? <laughs> You know, I think the, the best of the best outcome is we're actually starting to see employees now hold each other accountable for the use of some of these tools, you know, which, which was very surprising when we started seeing that. But, you know, we've started seeing employees respond to, let's say, a, a new employee email or to a birthday email saying, hey, you know, this would really be more appropriate in Yammer or if somebody doesn't reply all in our standard email saying, hey, you really should have re replied to this in Yammer or, or some other method, but really seeing that the employees were holding each other accountable for the use of the tools. And in some cases, even though they haven't been fully trained, you know, even though we haven't fully rolled out the training for Yammer, them seeing the capabilities and understanding, hey, this would really help us if it's moved into a different platform. Okay, well, that is all the questions that we have, although I do like to end with one final question. If you could summarize in about three words or so, or maybe one sentence, what the impact of a governance strategy has been for your organization, what would it be? I would have to say uh, simplification, making it easier, and really future, you know, preparing us for future acquisitions and future mergers and, and putting the foundation in place for that. That's a pretty great summary and it looks like you guys are well on your way to that future state. Um, so. I would like to, again, thank you, Mark and Camera Corner Connecting Point for being with us today. I appreciate your feedback and your ability to answer questions and can't wait to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye.